uh, over the last few weeks uh, you know uh, we've been working on what we call uh, the hasra data dictionary which is a set of uh, components that will uh, help you kind of build your own data dictionary right so let me talk about that in what that means in a bit so um, the the kind of problem or the goal is that uh, what we want to do is anybody who's consuming a hasra powered api we want to make it easy for them to understand the various models that they have and the methods that are available on those models right that's i mean i guess that's that's every single api that you're using right that's what you want to do so you want to see that these are the various entities that i have and then these are the queries and the mutations and the subscriptions that i can do on those entities um and uh, and and that's the reason why graphql itself is so popular because graphql makes it really easy to understand what those operations are and what those entities are um and uh, from from a hasra point of view what we want to do is when we think about these methods or the operations that are available on these models right um uh, you uh, from a, from a graphql operation point of view there queries mutations and subscriptions and from a hasra point of view they could be coming in from your database uh back methods directly right like you you fetch by a single element you fetch a list you fetch aggregates or it could come in from remote schemas where you have a remote schema that is referencing a particular element or vice versa right um and so that that becomes essentially a method that operates on or references that model that you have or an action right where you're saying create user which does something and then ultimately returns a reference to a user right um and so those are examples of like the things that uh, the various kinds of operations that you can have on the model um the reason why this becomes or this is important um is uh, and why a model first view rather than a method first view which is if you look at a graphql api and the result of a graphql api you would see all of the methods that are available as queries right um and the the reason why a model based view becomes more important sometimes is because uh, when you have hundreds or thousands of tables um and 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 as we've been working with some of our users uh and they have a really like a really large number of existing models right um it becomes very tedious to uh, look at the entire api in one shot right and you need kind of a more gradual a model or a semantic way of kind of approaching or navigating this landscape of things that you have um and and so that's kind of that was kind of the precursor or the the reason why this this uh, effort started coming together now the first question that you might have is you know why isn't the graphql api introspection result enough right and that isn't enough because the uh, graphql api uh, might expose way too many methods that get in the way of understanding these models right so again like you might have uh fetch a list fetch an aggregate fetch a single user run a custom action run a, a remote schema that references this a different uh uh graphql resolver or api um, or a root field that references this model right there's a lot happening and and you don't necessarily want to get into all of that before you first understand what this model is right imagine if someone new getting into an api or getting into a project that has thousands of these kinds of models and like 5000 methods on those models right um in in that in that uh, regard it, it must be said that there is there is something to go for um but when you think about like a rest api right and a idiomatic rest api that's organized well um it 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 is it is sometimes easier to drill down into the things that you want right because it it could be more model based if you look at like for example the kubernetes api documentation it's quite nice to kind of look at a particular like oh here's a deployment entity and these are the various things i can do to a deployment right it's convenient because you can map your understanding of kubernetes to the api quite quite easily um the uh, some the other the the other kind of information that you need from uh, uh from the apis and the models is is something that might be is is information about the model itself which might not be available in the graphql introspection result right for example you want to see which fields are actually columns which are indexes right um where do these fields come from is there like a lineage uh, or some information about a lineage that needs to be embedded uh into these into these fields right um and then if you're looking at it from a particular role point of view maybe you also want to expose information about uh what uh you know permissions uh in hasura can also have comments right so you want to have like a comment that describes who has access to these entities right and so you need a little more information about this model you want to surface more information about this model which can't go into the graphql introspection api itself because that piece is kind of information that is a little more to do with the 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 server that is implementing the api or or the data source itself right the third piece of information uh which is uh which i think is the most important especially for large kind of uh, schemas uh, and what we've seen 
is that if you want to associate more structured content and meta information about these models, you can't capture them in the GraphQL comments, right? Um, imagine, for example, that you want to have documentation for every field uh, that has, that is, uh, uh, if it's multilingual content or you want to internationalize it, right? You want to have documentation for what this particular field is in different languages. Now, how will you capture that inside a GraphQL fields comment, right? Um, it, it's not enough to just provide like the text string comment. It has to be a little more structured if you want to capture that. Even when you when you when you view the uh, schema documentation, you you need that content to be viewed, right? Um, or maybe you want to have like a sample query associated with the model that you want to show users and tell users, hey, you know what? Why don't you copy paste this query and get started with this query? Uh, so that it is, it gives you a meaningful result. Um, uh, or or uh, suppose you need kind of more information with it, like images that are associated with a particular field uh, that you might need. So so suddenly you realize that you kind of almost want like a metadata CMS type thing alongside your API documentation that is closely linked to your API that needs to exist, right? And and uh, uh, and the GraphQL introspection the result itself cannot natively power these things, right? Um, and so the kind of solution that we've that we've come up with that Gavin will preview today, it's still uh, you know it's not completely done, uh, but uh, the building blocks are emerging. And those building blocks are basically two. The first building block is an API, and it's a GraphQL API that serves the Hosura metadata and the data source information. So it's an API that you can add that will tell you everything about the the data as it is in say Postgres. And all of the information in that database as well. This is a key. This is a constraint. This is the um, this is an index. This is a primary key, right? And here's the Hasura metadata associated with it uh, as well. Or, or you start with the Hasura metadata and then kind of go into tables, right? So you say here's the Hasura model, which actually comes from this Postgres table and this remote schema, um, and uh, and and then these are the fields that map these data database columns and. Uh, and this is the documentation associated with it. So you have a GraphQL API to fetch that information. Today, you already have, today Hasura already exposes these APIs, but these APIs are available only in kind of a privileged way and it's not a GraphQL API. So the first thing is a GraphQL API that gives you this information. The second uh, important piece here is that it's actually role-based. So that means that when you make a request for, uh, for fetching this information, you can actually pass in a role and get the right slice of metadata and data source information for that particular role, which makes it very convenient um, uh, so that you can kind of uh, have a, a, a view of this information uh, for a particular role, right? Uh, and that's nice. The uh, second uh, the second piece uh, of, of, this, of this data dictionary solution is a set of React components that use the APIs and provide, a, uh, and provide certain features, like for example, a search feature. So you know we we take this metadata and data source information we index we index it locally uh, on offline storage and then you have a nice kind of convenient quick search feature you have a model view you have methods available on that model a visualization method that is a little less um, uh, intense than like a full GraphQL schema visualization which would be like a lot uh, but kind of a more condensed uh, visualization that can then uh, give you more detail right um, and 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 those are kind of the two building blocks to this solution. The, the the three killer things about this that 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 I really love and that that we designed that, that we had in mind when we designed this right is that um, this this is a this GraphQL API can be added to your so this is not today a part of Hasura right it's not a part of what Hasura by itself gives you it's a separate uh, GraphQL API kind of like a serverless function that you can run and deploy and that you can add to your Hasura project as a remote schema. So, so by default, your Hasura project will not have this kind of what we call the HDD or the data dictionary API. This API has to be added as an extra remote schema. The advantage of that is that it can be protected by a role. So, you know, this because the data dictionary API might be privileged, right? It might not be something that you want to give to everybody, right? Um, it might be something that you want to give to certain developers only or to certain types of people. And you can now protect it with the role, uh, which is a little bit meta, right? Because you're like, wait, you know, what, what's what? It's, 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 uh, Metaception, whatever, whatever the word here is. Um, and then the third, the third aspect of this is that you can also um, add in a mult, another data source, like a Postgres database that is exclusively like a CMS for your API. Or you can use maybe something like Contentful or an external CMS altogether that has more documentation or structured information about your fields. Right, so you can say, hey, here's the field, here's an image with it, here are the five different languages in which this is documented. And now that can be managed separately, right? 
Um, uh, and, and, and the nice thing is you can join between this GraphQL API and this uh, information schema that you have, right? This, this extra information that you maintain. And so that way you can, you can keep extending uh, both the GraphQL schema itself, like the introspection result and the Hasura metadata associated with it and the database information or the data source information associated with it. All of these can now be extended with custom attributes and extra information that you want so that you can kind of create that perfect data dictionary API and portal that you need uh, and that you want to have with your developers, right? With the right mixture of the React components that you have and the APIs that you have to, to, set, this, to set this up yourself. So um, uh, Gavin will be doing a demo and this is not, uh, this is not yet ready for launch, but there's something that, we working, that we've been working on that we wanted to uh, show, show off to you folks and discuss a little start a discussion round uh, and, uh, and this should be very exciting. So Gavin, over to you for a quick demo. Oh, I'm on mute still. Okay, um, let me share my screen. Uh, and you guys can all see and hear? Yep. Yep, yep. Oh, oh. I, sorry, I tried to drag the, the Zoom thing out of the way because it's blocking my bar. Okay, anyways. Um, so yeah, this is essentially what the API looks like. Um, so you have your Hasura metadata, uh, which is just your metadata.json uh, that you would get. Uh, from your Hasura instance. Uh, and then here this says Postgres, but this could be other data sources in the future too. Uh, and you kind of have tables and views with, uh, you know, columns, primary uh, and foreign keys, indices, all that stuff. Uh, and so what this allows you to do, uh, I'll close this, uh, is kind of get a really easy view uh, of your data. Um, so the first page uh, is essentially an overview of all your data tables uh, with a description and the source, uh, you can kind of uh, search here. And so let's say you want to know more about actors. You're like, okay, uh, well, I want to see actors. Uh, these are my database fields with a description. Uh, you can see your indices here, as well as uh, all the queries uh, in your schema that uh, are related to this, the operations. And then this down here is um, like a first and second degree uh, relationship view. Uh, so let's say, uh, okay, well, I want to know uh, what information do I get back when I query this and what does that query look like? Uh, so you can click uh, try it out here and it'll pre-fill this. Uh, obviously more work needs to be done, but let's assume we remove those fields. Then you get it here. Uh, this tab, uh, this data graph is a sort of uh, ERD view of all your data models and the ways that they're connected. Uh, again, not a final UI. Uh, so let's say I want to know what uh, invoices. I can see this here, uh, object and array relationships. And let's say I want to go to the detail page, uh, and then that pops me back over here. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty much uh, what we got. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, people can build some cool stuff with this. It's all you know, Next.js, uh, React, Tailwind. Um, 